In this video, I want to take time to meteorologically compare kind of every single recent year in New York City and see how they line up. So, 2022 is hard to get a gauge on how it was. In the city, that January was 3.4 degrees below average, despite the first two days of the month being very mild, with January 1st even being stuck in the 50s all day. The second day got even warmer to 59 degrees, which I believe set a new record for high temperature. However, an Arctic front moved through, dropping the temperature to 37 by midnight, which would be the high the next day. January 4th was the first low in the teens that winter because December was exceedingly mild. And January 8th would see the first day with a high stuck below freezing. Also, the first snowfall of an inch or more was the day before January 7th, which actually makes sense because these winter storms typically bring forth cold fronts along with them. On January 11th, a shot of Arctic air brought wind chills below zero and while it went away, the cold wave came back stronger on January 15th, where the high temperatures, 21 degrees, achieved at midnight. So the afternoon high temperatures in the upper teens, and the low got down to 10 degrees. Long-term cold came in a form of a six-day cold wave, and all in all, January again finished 3.4 degrees below normal. That was the city's most below average month since November 2019 was 4.1 degrees below average. Largely due to in mid-November, a cold wave coming through, dropping temperatures from the mid to upper 50s down to 25 by midnight and 23 the next morning, establishing two new record lows. And I believe the Friday before, one might have also been tied. That frosty November day was cold even for the depths of January as highs only managed to top out at 34 degrees. Now, as far as the um, February, February had a below average low, but it had a very wide variation in its average high and low, which actually led to February still being I believe 1.4 degrees above average. That March was also quite above average, although I'm not sure by how much, but I believe it was two degrees or so. So at that point it made up for January, but April would be nearly a degree below average. So 2022 would have the first four months colder than average if I'm correct about um, how March was, which again, it might've been more, it might have been less. I'm, I'm trying to think about it. Um, I know March 2021 was about 3 degrees, and I know this was colder. This was 4 degrees above average until the end of the month. An Arctic front came through and dropped temperatures from the upper 40s to the upper 20s by midnight, and bottoming them out at 23 degrees on March um, 28th. While this was far from a record low, though at some newer New York City sites, this was close to a record low. The high of 33 degrees did establish a record for the coldest high. Several of them were established across the Northeast, and the cold lingered into March 29th and even into the 30th, before severe storms would end it by the 31st, but a reinforcing shot of Arctic air, although not as powerful, came in the first couple days of April before leaving for relative good. But April was still below normal. May, however, was 0.8 degrees above normal. June was 0.6 below normal. So the year seems pretty close to average to start us off. However, July, July would be about two degrees warmer than average, I believe 2.1 to be exact, ranking as the ninth hottest. The low temperature of the entire month of 65 degrees would be one of the warmest for a record low, uh, for the lowest temps of the month, I mean. And every single day for just the second July and third m month of all in New York history had a high above 80 degrees. However, unlike the previous two times this happened, where there'll be over 50 days of highs in the 80s, this time around, 
there would be highs in the 70s immediately before July began and immediately after July ended. So it would actually only be 33 consecutive days of highs in the 80s. However, this is still way more than a summer's usual streak of 20. And as far as uh, August, August is also trending to be pretty well above normal. I'm not sure how much, given how most days have had highs in the 80s as well. And given how, like in July, some heat waves have managed to develop uh, alongside cooler but still warm conditions. September also appears to be starting at this rate. I mean, look at my tweet, which I'll link in the description. Um, on how September in New York City is poised to start off warmer than average, although that's not necessarily going to be accurate to the timing of the video. It's currently 7.33, and I believe I made a tweet around 11.20 in the morning. And as we know, forecasts do change vigorously. It's also not going to be accurate leading into it, but it'll give you a rough sense of what New York City people can expect. It's definitely going to be warmer than last September, at least for the highest temperature, where the temperature managed to only make it to 85 degrees for the entire month, which is below normal. But we're still have a warmer than average September. We're going to get to 2021 in a second. Actually, we'll get to it right now. So... 2021 began with a January that was 1.1 degrees above average, but that February was 1.7 degrees below average. On top of that, it saw the snowiest first day of any month on record, and it was the eighth snowiest February in all. 26.8 inches of snow fell throughout February. For reference, we had December had 10.5 inches, January had 2.1 inches, making it in the bottom fifth, and March just had a trace. I have the keys, back. And I don't think April had any snow at all. And May definitely didn't have any snow. In case you're wondering what I'm getting at, it's because of 2020. Just you know, there was no snow in April or May 2022 in New York either. And March was about three degrees above average this year. This is because while well, the last time, the last March had a high of 74 in a month, which was a lot cooler and suburbs due to wind off the water being especially severe during the month, unlike so unlike the last time where some New York City suburbs actually managed to experience a warmer February temperature than New York City, um, where the city only got to 68 and some parts of the island got to 69. This time around, a lot of parts of the island will be stuck in with highs in the mid-60s for the entire month, while the city got 74 degree conditions twice. But it was still not, and that was 2022. In 2021, highs of 82 degrees were recorded, and this extended pretty deep inland. Although by the time we got to Iceland, it was still in the mid-60s, with Montauk being held to the mid-50s. 82 degrees is insane. It set a daily record, and it was close to setting a monthly record as well. March typically does not see temperatures this warm. April would also be above average, but I'm not sure by how much. And we're seeing 85 degree temperature, although this time, the, much of the island was held into the mid-70s. The low would be 52 that morning, so it's actually also quite a rebound. However, they did have one of the coldest April temperatures in years, because April 2nd had a low of 28 in the city. Even in the suburbs, many of the places were had lows that only got to 30 degrees. May would be about 0.3 degrees below normal, and rainfall would be about average as well. Despite the chilliest Memorial Day weekend on record, the average high is 57 and the average low is 48. This is because one day tied a, a daily record low high, and the other day broke it by four degrees, despite both having highs of 51, which is really chilly for the end of May. June, though, would be 2.3 degrees above average, and with July being 1.5 degrees below average, we would actually see June being one of the closest years to July on record, 
Some places like Boston even had a June that was warmer than July, although this did not happen in New York City, but we did get close. Despite this, we saw the, the, the chilliest temperature that late in June since 1995, when one of the mornings, I believe the 23rd, though it might have been the 24th, got down to 54 or 55 degrees. This was the chilliest temperature in the month, despite some parts of the island having temperatures hovering around 50 on the first day of the month. Oh, and the last day of June was had a torrid high of 98 degrees that would still hold as the warmest day of the year. Meanwhile, July cooled to the 50s for the first time since 2009. August would not cool to the 50s, however, and would also be above average and would also be warmer than July. This happens in about one in four years, and it's also happened in 2018 and 2015, though I doubt it's happening in 2022, but this kind of event is not without precedent. This has happened before. September was also on the warmer side, but by less than two degrees, I'm pretty sure. September had a very minimal duration. It was one of the lowest on record of, the, of September because the highest temperature of the core in the month was 85 and the lowest was 54. Typically, September sees a high temperature getting to about 90 and a low temperature getting to about 50. But this year, there was none of that. Um, it got up to the mid 80s and it got down to the mid 40s, uh, 50s. October had its highest temperature of 79 degrees. And this is one degree lower than the average of 80. But make no mistake, as that October would still go down as the sixth warmest in history at 4.1 degrees above average. The reason why October was so warm was mainly because of the nights. The lowest temperature of the month of 47 degrees established a new record because never before had in October never gotten to 46 degrees or below. Although some parts of the suburbs did actually manage to get to the lower 40s when the city was held at 47 degrees. Indeed, it was these average lows that pushed it up as there were 13 days in a row of low temperatures in the 60s. And 12 of them were in the low 60s. Although a lot of these nights the suburbs did cool to the 50s, but not all of them. However, on day 13 of the streak, the low was 63. The streak was finally ended by severe storms on the 16th and ushered in the first time the low got to the 50s in the season on October 18th, which is the second latest on record. It was the first time since May 31st that the low cooled to the 40s. A lot of these days though, the city saw lower high temperatures in the suburbs. So they managed to have their first high stuck in the 50s before some parts of the suburbs did. As far as November goes, that was 1.8 degrees below average. And as far as December went, that was 4.7 degrees above average and the third warmest on record. There was even a night in December with a low in the mid 50s, which is something that is pretty damn rare. Pretty damn rare indeed. And December would only cool down to 25 degrees, which is one of the warmest December minimum temperatures on record. The high temperature of the month also got to 66 degrees. Ignore what Wikipedia says about 67. That's what I found in the sources. But um, it's actually not correct. It's 66. But yeah. Okay. And now I do want to talk about um, 2015 for a second. Because I think what happened in 2015 is particularly interesting. January was 2.7 degrees below average. February was 11.4 degrees below average. That's right, 11.4 degrees below average. The average temperature during that month was 23.9 degrees. And usually, it's in the 30s somewhere. I don't know. 
March was 4.4 degrees below average, but getting back to February, that was the third coldest February on record, behind only 1934 and 1899. Because even in 1979, where it was frigid throughout the month, the last eight days had a substantial warm-up, and some days managed to get to the 50s. The third coldest, highest temperature of the month was established, as the month only managed to warm to 43 degrees. Surprisingly, there were no sub-zero temperatures, though temperatures did get as low as 2 degrees, which did set daily records. A lot of places had their coldest February on record, and several states, including New York, had their second coldest, because New York City got, guess what, slightly spared by the cold wave. That's right, slightly spared. April would be a bit above average, but May would feel like June. And not that much warmer than the June following, it was just 0.2 degrees below normal. May would clock in as the second warmest on record. But we still had quite a deficit to make up, and that June being a bit below normal did not help. Not a single day in May managed to have a high in the 50s, though a few days in June did. July was also above average, but I'm not sure how much. But August was 0.2 degrees warmer and became the fourth warmest on record. It was the third warmest at the time, but the year after it was the past. The months did have similar temperatures though. And like I said about July 2022, when I talked about that, August 2015 had a high above 80 on every single day of the month. September became the warmest on record by 0.9 degrees. It would be warmer than June and would be about five degrees above average. October was only 1.1 degrees above average, but November was about five degrees above average and was the warmest on record at the time. 2020 would surpass that, and November 2020 would be warmer than April 2020 because April 2020 was, in fact, um, April 2020 was, in fact, 2.7 degrees below average. Mainly because not a single day managed to have a high in the 70s. The highest temperature was 68, which was lower than the highest temperature in January and March. However, the lowest temperature of the month was 36 degrees, which was warmer than May when the air cooled down to 34 degrees during an Arctic outbreak. That brought our latest trace of snow. The city only saw a trace of snow in February and March, but they also saw a trace in April and May, which is pretty amazing. Ice Lip saw snow in May, and they did not see a single flake of snow fall in February, meaning that May had more snow than February in Ice Lip. Oh, and to add insult to injury, highs were kept below 50, 50 degrees in a lot of the, these areas. To add more insult to injury, Fairbanks managed to hit the mid-70s and then the low 80s as the city was, and other cities were still recovering from that. While there was a high above 80 in the city in May before this. There was not in Philadelphia. So for the first time in history, Fairbanks hit 80 before Philly hit 80. Truly astounding indeed. But this year, because April was above average, November would not be warmer than April. December would be a lot warmer than March. In fact, it had an astounding temperature of 50.8 degrees compared to March's 38.1. In fact, December was 13 plus degrees above average, by far the warmest month in September, and the highest above the second warmest month on record by a long shot, 6.7 degrees. December would see a day with a high of 72 and a low of 63, which is so much above average that there has never been a day that has been that above average before in the city's history. It wasn't even so much so the high of 72, but the low of 63. 
The warmest low of any day in meteorological winter. The warmest Christmas is also recorded, but by that point, a cold front was coming in. But every single day for the first time in history was above average, and December only cooled down to 34 degrees. So when you factor that in, 2015 was one of the warmest years on record for the city, in spite of such a frigid winter, which I think makes it even more remarkable. If you had instead replaced it with January, February, and March 2016, you would have found that it would have been significantly warmer. After June 2015, as a matter of fact, no month would be below average until March 2017, which is 3.3 degrees below average and would be colder than February. Low temperatures would be colder than December 2016 and January 2017. And keep in mind, Jan January 2017 had a warmer low than December 2016 as well, despite December 2016 being warmer. It was also only a smidge warmer than average because while most of the months were significantly above average, some months were only slightly above average. April would make up for this by being the second warmest on record, but May, despite a three-day heat wave, though, though in some parts of the island no days had high in the 90s, the city had three, but despite all that, May was below average, and it was more so on the highs. I mean, to be quite fair, uh, the next six days after that failed to get to 70 degrees once the cold front came in, something that is pretty unusual and it led to a chillier may than average in spite of this and because october was record warm and saw some record late dates for lows in the 70s although may was one degree off from tying a record for the warmest low in may when the low hit 75 on one of the days in the heat wave but i don't want to ramble on incompetently for too long but but um but in 20, fifteen, uh, hang on, in, but in October, we had a record late date for a low in the 70s, which so actually eclipsed just a year later in 2018, which also a record late date for a, um, for a low in the 80s on August 29th. Because of the, um, because October 2018, though, it finished more like November, despite starting out like September, it would only be 0.8 degrees above average. 2018 was weird. 2017 was the 14th warmest on record in New York, despite five of the months being below average. You had March and May, and definitely December and November, and there was one of the months sprinkled in there. It wasn't October. February was the second warmest... It was actually the warmest at the time until 2018 eclipsed it. And it still has the warmest low on one of the dates when the low is 58 degrees on February 24th. And, and it was even warmer just a bit further north where some places set all-time February records, although the city failed to do so. It didn't even set a daily record due to bad luck of how the previous record warm high occur on the exact same date. So the high didn't set a record, but the low did, because the low, again, was 50 degrees, typical of late May, early June. The suburbs were wanted being screwed over, more so on the low, as they had lows in the low 40s, which is really the urban heat down at its peak. But yeah, October 2017 was the warmest on record, and it was warmer than May. It was about six degrees above average, as a matter of fact. As a matter of fact, I believe every October since 2011 managed to have above average temperatures, which is really a record. Um, twenty eleven and twenty twelve, one of the two. Because ever since twenty eighteen where they made that comment about how being the least of hours in seven years. 2019 was 3.3 .3 degrees above average, which wound up having a day with a high of 93 degrees, which is actually the warmest in October it's been since the 1940s when it got very close to an October heat wave, but we didn't actually wind up having one. However, the next day, the low, the high temperature was about 30 degrees colder and afternoon temperatures were kept in the mid to low 50s. 
a shower and drizzle felt throughout the day. It would warm up back to the low 60s by midnight and keep on warming up, but then another you know, cold front would come down and it actually would get to the 40s this time. Of course, this made November even more brutal and December will be even colder than that with the first four days being stuck in the 30s. However, this January and February would both be warmer than December. And this is despite December being a bit above average in itself. And then March was also above average by quite a bit. October 2020 would also be about 20 degrees above average. And October 2021 we already talked about. So you can see this warming trend in the years. I believe the last below average year for New York City was 2014. And that was due to a polar vortex keeping the first four months below average. Although that meteorological winter was not as cold as 2014-2015, but we didn't have the warming trend you saw later. I mean, April was still below average. May was only two degrees above normal. Um, and, um, and I believe November 2014 was also pretty well below normal. I mean, there were some above average months, but due to the prolonged cold wave in the beginning of the year, where it was really just three months of very cold conditions, I mean, it was actually pretty brutal.